All right, people have suggested that the Firewalker may be a bit more substantial than I remember, so let's go check it out. We are, after all, in the neighborhood already, conveniently. Hopefully I don't go too low on energy here so I can make my return trip. Uh, we still have more than half. We're fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. You worry too much. Anomaly detected. Ziona has a thin atmosphere of sulfur dioxide and trioxide created by volcanic outgassing. There are traces of water vapor in the atmosphere, but over the last f five centuries of observation, particle counts have decreased 4%. While not habitable by any spacefaring species, there is an abundance of native sulfur-devouring bacteria that thrives around the world's many volcanic events. Interestingly, these bacteria bear genetic similarities to the native life of Ilium, suggesting either a pans... panspermia? Right. That's like, that's like planet from planet, uh... Uh, biotic infection, basically. Infection's not the right word. It's when life forms spread across great distances by uh, somehow being relocated by maybe a meteorite or alien inter uh, alien interference, which is very possible with the past cycles we have and stuff like that. Uh, spread of microbes via asteroids or accidental contamination of the environment, our original environment by careless spacefarers. That's all. Well, I guess they basically said what I was going to say then. Well then. Let's start our scanner. It's been a little while, huh? Why, hello there, resources. I'll grab you while I'm here. Looks like right around here is the best I'm gonna get. Probe away. I will absolutely take that. Alright, so there's something up here. On the other side of the planet, apparently. Ooh, what was that? Whoa. Whoa. It's like this- it's like this graph is mad at me. That vibration is fierce. Oh. Where's the dot? There it is. Probe launched. I have found something. We now have the ability to land. Scans have located the Hammerhead Exploration Vehicle and also show active data storage sites that may contain information as to the whereabouts of DRS, uh, Doctors Case and Oloy. I'm not used to seeing doctors abbreviated and pluralized at once. You interestingly get the chance to bring people along. I don't know if they're actually going to get a chance to be used in the field, though. I think we're just kind of driving a tank around for a while. Oh, goodness, Garrus. How long has it been since you were in the party last? Seven more points. I feel like I used you recently. So I could go further into overload. Heavy overload greatly increases overload damage, destabilizes synthetic enemies, causing them to explode when destroyed. Or area overload increases the explosion radius of overload, making it greater to hit multiple targets. Given that I'm specializing him as a sniper, or at least I think of him as a sniper now because the game set him up as being a sniper now, maybe I'll do heavy single target attack instead of AoE for him in particular. There you go. Choice is further down Turian Rebel or Concussive Shot. I'll give you that next point. And I'll give you the next point too. Inferno grenade. I really should. I really should be buying those other skills because I have them. That's a snap freeze. That's a warp. It's it's one of those things where I'd be more inclined to get every single skill if it wasn't for the fact that uh, as you get new skills and try to level them up, uh, they get exponentially more expensive with every rank, and the game gives all your skills a shared cooldown, which somewhat disincentivizes the idea of using multiple skills if certain other ones are already working because they all share the same cooldown. So popping on power armor and then using either Overload or Reeve seems like one of the more logical choices I can do for most combat scenarios because if at the moment I use one of those skills, I can't use anything else. So I somewhat question this change. I kind of did prefer the previous game's thing where getting more skills was worth it because your other skills would have their own individual cooldowns and they had relatively longer cooldowns too to compensate. Dr. Aloy. I think we'll be safer there. 
Interesting. The level shouting at me, unsubtitled. I forgot about the fact that we actually don't start off with said Firewalker, or whatever the vehicle's called, and I'm, I'm blank Hammerhead for the Firewalker uh, quest line. Although it might just be in here. Well now, and so we get our grand unveil of the Hammerhead tank, which is somewhat diminished by the fact that I already drove one that is presumably not the same vehicle, uh, but a diff but a very identical vehicle in a uh, previous mission overload, Overlord. Sorry, hurt. There we go. Let's get started then. So these are basically platforming challenges. So much like the Overlord mission, they immediately throw us into a lava-filled sort of area in an attempt to create a place that's dangerous for you. Because otherwise you're just a super tank cruising around, so most landscapes can't really pose a problem. And it admittedly becomes clear relatively quickly that Bioware are not developers known for making uh, platformers. I immediately have, admittedly, no sense of direction of where I'm trying to go. Is it you? Yeah, completely clear. <laughs> Didn't they have me boost through the fire as Sh as Shepard at the beginning of the campaign also? That's just, that's just their go-to way of teaching you how to run. Scanning. That is a mechanic I'm generally amused by and I, I kind of I kind of like its silly inclusion is the uh I'm scanning this thing. Oh no, it's throwing us off. We have to hold the joystick in the right direction to stay in the circle. I'm like that's I can't explain it very well, and it seems silly, but it's amusing, and it's and it's relatively enjoyable to play. So, who cares? <laughs> A little bit more for the collection. So I think there is supposed to be some kind of narrative through line or something comes up around here. But I also think that they're going to immediately scrap the Hammerhead vehicle after the, after Mass Effect 2. Continuing this franchise's really weird relationship with its primary uh, surface vehicles in the franchise. Mass Effect 1 has a non-stop fetish for the uh, the Mako that is inter it's, uh, incorporated in the main game. And I think it's ultimately paid off nicely, because as I said during our Mass Effect 1 playthrough, because of how it shows up in the climax of the game like it actually is a vehicle that's used in the story at the near the end of the story to further the story like it could have been done without this without the mako i'm sure if they just re if they just changed things a little bit but the way that it's incorporated makes it feel like it was worth including in the game but the planet side mako exploring was uh incredibly empty and slow and not all the all, not all that engaging in a very no man's sky sort of way so now they have the, the Hammerhead. But the Hammerhead's weird because the Hammerhead wasn't in the core game. <laughs> so unlike the Mago, this mission Hammerhead... There we go, we just end the mission now. This is the tutorial zone, which is why I'm rambling about whatever. Off we go. That's a cool detail, by the way, the part where it's apparently a shuttle and it can just get back on the Normandy, although it directly contradicts the idea of how high the vehicle can jump, because it clearly can't jump that high, like, all the time. So now we have a hammerhead. It apparently can jump into orbit, but not when you're playing it, ever. It can barely jump when you're playing it. <laughs> or, I, know, I mean, it can jump really high, but it, uh, it gives out pretty quickly. Uh, more specifically, the, the, the hammerhead we played in Overlord, though, had, like, no jump to it. Maybe because that planet has a completely different uh, level of gravity than this one did. I don't. I don't check the gravity values too often, ad admittedly. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Crap. 
I reflexively hit A to open it, and that's not the correct response. Prototype recovered. Where was it? Oh my god, we read this or this many already? <laughs> Project Firewalker. Uh, good work on recovering the hammerhead in one piece, Commander. It will prove useful. Also, the data you recovered from the MSV Rosalie's emergency beacon contained a significant intel on a few planets that Dr. Case and Dr. Alloy investigated. Edie has added the locations to your galaxy map. We hope that one of them leads you to the Prothean site. Despite Dr. Case's obvious instability, he's proven to be a brilliant and dedicated scientist. If you can salvage more of his logs or journals, it would greatly help our efforts. We still don't know how the Geth are tracking Dr. Case, so be careful. There we go. So follow up on these people that are apparently being hunted by the Geth, and that's a problem if we want to ever catch up with them. And I forgot to check where the next location is going to be, but I assume I have to go back to the mass relay, judging by the lack of waypoints in this strip in this particular system. So as I was saying, uh, the hammerhead, while being a, an improvement from a control perspective, uh, and even some of the levels you play in it are kind of better to an extent, uh, it's not incorporated into the game very well because it was literally not in the game at launch. It's part of the Cerberus Network, which was the, uh, Matt, that was, a uh, EA's whole online pass thing, where at one point they were like, every game we ever ship will come with an online pass forever. That's gone now, obviously, so I guess that would, I guess they were wrong. <laughs> but, uh, that was there for a while, and it was a miserable time, where every EA game, you had to, every time you bought it, you had to take a code out of the pamphlet section of the CD case, and you would enter it online by typing it in into the code rede redemption part of the uh, console, and that would be your online pass. Uh, if you if it was an online video game, you it was required to play the game online at all. So if you played a game that had online multiplayer and you bought it from EA, then you had to enter your, the code in order to even play it in multiplayer at all. If it was single player, they would lock off DLC that was quote unquote free with the online pass, or you'd have to purchase the online pass for like fifteen dollars. It was all a weird, uh, semi-desperate attempt to, uh, combat, uh, used games and stuff like that. Little did, little did they know, they primarily just had to wait for, uh... They just had to wait for digital content to become really popular, and then that would, and then that was gonna solve itself. Because nowadays, I think, judging by how, uh, much GameStop seems to be struggling in many cases, it sure seems that, uh, used games have had their own downfall, just in the rise of digital video games, because it's gotten so easy to buy your games online and download them and so on and so forth, and Steam has gotten popular and things like that, that I think that, uh... I think the problem kind of solved itself for EA. But whether it was because the problem was solving itself or because of the bad flack, because I think they got a lot of bad press from this stuff, uh, sooner or later EA finally acquiesced and just stopped this terrible habit. But games like Mass Effect are forever scarred by its original presence, unless they patch the entire content concept out of each game. You never know. I think there are some games out, out there that are way worse off than Mass Effect that are actually like... I think there's a few games that are basically permanently ripped apart by that entire concept. It's rather undramatic and unimportant in a Mass Effect 2's case, but it's important to the context of what Firewalker is, because Firewalker was part of the Cerberus Network, which was part of, like, the, the product purchase you could buy called Cerberus Network, which makes it part of the online pass. Which means it's not incorporated in any way in the entire story. <laughs> so you play the entire story campaign front to back, including all of its side content, and the Firewalker will never show up, ever. But then you download the Firewalker DLC, and you play, and you get, not the Firewalker, the Hammerhead. You download the Firewalker DLC, and you get to play the, fi the Hammerhead, and then Overlord, which was a DLC that came out afterwards, also incorporates the Hammerhead. But aside from that, it's like it's not even part of the game. So while they made something that technically controls better than Mako, because of the way it was delivered as a weird, carved up EA product, uh, it doesn't jive with the rest of the game, like, at all. <laughs> and is largely a weird, sectioned off piece of content. Scans have found locations matching the descriptions of Dr. Case's survey studies. Exploring the sites could reveal valuable mission and data. Warning. Geth presence detected on planet's surface. Use extreme caution. When it comes to Mass Effect 3, I genuinely can't remember a vehicle. I don't know if it was just a really forgettable vehicle or if they just completely gave up after two attempts, but 
I don't at all remember driving a vehicle in that game. I will op I will be glad to admit that I'm wrong if I'm wrong. But damn if I... I, I can't remember it even a little bit. Uh, let's cycle in various characters from time to time. Gives us an opportunity to get various characters upgraded and keep up with what their skills are so we can have them spent in advance. Yep, they're a bit far behind. Alright, so I can go further down Cerberus off Officer if I want to. Which is great, because it's the, uh, the party bonus. Yeah, squad health and squad weapon damage. Those are great. Miranda might be one of the more objectively effective party members in the entire game, basically. So do you want 15% weapon damage or 15% health for your squad? I'm partial to weapon damage, just because uh, some of the deaths in this game can be so catastrophic and abrupt that a bit of bonus health won't necessarily save them. But you can go either way, really. I'm gonna go with uh, with weapon damage. Cerberus leader. There you go, Miranda. But yeah, between having warp and overload and uh, a f like a sl the slam, like force attack, and having that kind of passive for their party, it does give her quite an edge over other characters that just don't have that kind of versatility. People don't usually have the ability to affect the stats of their party members just by existing. So that's noteworthy on its own. Let's go ahead and grab this. This is another case of being able to help your party member. Your party out. So he has Inferno ammo and Squad Incendiary ammo. So basically, do you want to make his fire bonus to his weapon more powerful, or do you want to affect the entire party? Which, to which I say yes. Especially now, because this particular Shepard I'm playing doesn't have an ammo attack. So if I want to have uh, augmented uh, uh, elemental damage on my weapons, I need to have a par uh, party member that has a squad ammo skill, or just do so, or, or just make do without, which is entirely possible, but doesn't hurt. So by taking ja now taking Jacob and Miranda out actually gives me uh, two separate types of passive bonuses. Gather here! You guys have been absent from this game so far. The primary antagonist of the entire previous game. And they haven't really been showing up so far. Which is its own curiosity to resolve sooner or later in the story. They're, I, they might have shown up somewhere and I may have forgotten, but the primary place we've seen them before now was the other uh, Hammerhead DLC, Overlord. Which was, uh, in, their, in that case, though, they were mind-controlled, like, weird, experimented-on, captured Geth that the, uh, very unfortunate captive of Overlord was, uh, was, uh, taking control of. That's a really tragic ending to a DLC. Over overall, Overlord's kind of forgettable, but that, the, the, that, those last, that, like, last half an hour of it is, is why I remember the whole thing for sure. It might actually be one of the sadder moments of the entire franchise, which is a surprise, because it's... It does have... The, the franchise does have attempts at sadness, but damn. Oh, wait, I'm trying to touch you, aren't I? Are you said artifact? There it is. For a moment there, I thought it was a shield generator. Whoops. So to be specific, uh, the squad ammo upgrade is relatively common. Uh, there are at least three or four characters, I think, that have the ability to augment their weapon with different ammo types, and then you can give the uh, the squad variation where it happens to their entire party. That's not uncommon, so technically a lot of characters can, can have some impact on their overall party's uh, stats, in that they can affect their attack type a bit. But it's, uh, it's relatively exclusive to Miranda, the idea of being able to buff your entire party. I won't commit to the idea that she's the only person in the party, because I haven't exactly checked. But, uh, at, at least early on, like, that's... That's a sta that's a skill that makes her stand out in a game where most of your party members kind of are using recombined versions of skills that everyone else has. Like, basically, there's a list of spells like Overlord, uh, Overlord, uh, Overload, and, uh, and Warp, and stuff like that. Please die. That was close. 
Please heal. Oh god. That's not good. I'm gonna fly away a little bit. Like, people have skills like Overload, and they have Warp, and they have Throw, and like, basic over overlapping skills like that. And everyone, so picking specific character members from a uh, mechanical standpoint is basically just picking which combination of those skills you want. And it's not until you do their loyalty missions that you unlock their exclusive skill, because everyone's loyalty mission uh, skill is a skill that nobody else in the entire game has, and that's what makes them unique. Which is actually a nice touch, because presumably doing their loyalty mission makes you learn who they are better as a human being. Well, human being's a bad word. Uh, person. <laughs> Human's not accurate in this case, but you learn you learn who they are better as a person by doing their their uh, personal missions. So it kind of makes sense that they would then start to stand out more in the squad by exhibiting new skills. It doesn't make sense that their skills would suddenly manifest or appear out of nowhere at that moment. But from a mechanic standpoint, it's a way of having the mechanics uh, directly reflect the tone of the story, in that the characters are getting recontextualized from the perspective of the protagonist. Oh. No, thank you. So in a game where everyone starts off being relatively similar, having one starting squad member that is both... that is both your, almost like a local leader within your group and has the ability to buff all the other people in the party uh, stands out a bit. Alright, wow. I'm just not hitting that destroyer. <laughs> the game... <I'm laughs> Come on, game. <laughs> It's okay. This is a. Uh, this probably speaks to a similar thing as to what me having issues with the powers in this game, which is that it'll give you a fr uh, a reticle around somebody when you're aiming at them, and that does not mean you're actually aiming at them. Unfortunately, what it means is that that's the health bar that's li that's listed on top of the screen. If there's a reticle around somebody like this, that means that the health bar on the top of the screen is is matching that specific character. It unfortunately does not mean that your powers and attacks are locking onto that character. Which is frustrating, because your powers and attacks are locking onto something a lot of the time, but it doesn't get uh, displayed visually by the game anywhere. And bafflingly, the game does show you your lock on for your health bar, but that doesn't match the lock on for your skills at times. And this is a pretty strong case, because I'm aiming straight at somebody, and the guy gets covered in a reticle, but my homing missiles chase a completely different enemy, and I have no direct control over that, as far as I can tell. So I'll aim at one guy, and the reticle will pop up, I'm like, okay, let's get him! And then you fire that missile off, and it shoots a, at a completely different character. But because you're not a facing the character it's just that it's humming after, it's curving like a lunatic across the map, and probably actually just functionally hitting nothing in instead of somebody else. Get the drop ship detected. And that's unfortunate. But it's probably the type of mechanic that would have gotten more polish if this vehicle was used in more than, like, two missions of the entire game. Yeah, that were both optional DLC content, one of which was provided at, for quote-unquote free. So it, it fits weirdly into the overall product. Whoa. That was a close call. I think my... One of my gripes I have specifically about how uh, land vehicle combat is handled in a in both Mass Effects, uh, both the first and second Mass Effect games, is that I want... I kind of want all of my enemies to be shooting big, dumb projectiles all the time. Because, like, this this is good. This is missiles, and that other guy shot a crazy energy orb at me. But, uh, oftentimes, like, when we're fighting those turrets in the Overlord DLC, and also while we're going around in some of this DLC, a lot of your enemies just shoot at you with, like, basic machine guns. So, like, they're shooting at you with rifles in the distance. And the projectiles, from this perspective, are kind of invisible. And since you're getting shot at by invisible projectiles, you don't really have much understanding... <clears throat> you don't really have much understanding of how much damage is happening to you, or where it's coming from, or how to avoid it, and so on. You just are suddenly taking damage, and then before long, you're... You're just getting... You're just hearing a siren, and you're like, How do I deal with the siren? Oh, God. Which is something that's sort of added to by the fact that this is the one part of the game where the game suddenly decides that it's not going to give you a health bar. Because it gives you a health bar for all basic gameplay all the time. But suddenly I don't have a health bar, and I'm getting hit by invisible projectiles because they're, they're, it's machine gun fire. 
so I can't appreciate that I'm taking damage until I hear a siren. But then because the siren's the only way of measuring the damage you're taking, it's hard to actually have a good understanding of how much damage is being ha is happening and how close you are to dying. Like, I'm already hearing a siren now, but there's no fire on the ship, so like... Is that... is that heavy damage? Is that just saying we've been hit a little bit? So it's like... Everyone go to the... like, everyone... like, all hands on deck, this is, this is the Star Trek alarm saying combat's happening, as opposed to you're in danger of dying. But ultimately, this kind of fidelity doesn't end up mattering just because the, the missions don't require a lot of skillful play. So, it's the type of thing where if this was Doom, I would be like, why isn't this articulated better? But because it's like, these couple of tiny micro-missions, it's kind of just, eh, whatever. It doesn't quite work. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Artifacts cataloged from Project Firewalker. The artifacts you've gathered might give us a lead on larger Protean site. They have incredible value for historians and might be instrumental in building our understanding of the Prothean legacy. Excellent work in mitigating the Geth presence, Commander. We will keep you appraised of further Geth activity should it threaten mission integrity. Karumto. Probe away. Something on our sensors. Research station detected within volcano on planet's surface. The research station's data storage systems are still active and may contain valuable information. Warning, volcano is unstable. Advise extreme caution. Let's give Morden some shield capabilities. Yeah. You can go for 25% weapon damage or 25% shields. I'm gonna go for shields for him. Let's keep him safe. Morden's a nice guy. Well, Morden's cool. <laughs> I don't know if he's a nice guy. He's a cool guy, and he does good things. He does compassionate things, even. Not sure if he's nice. That might not be the right word. Welcome to another planet with platforming. Activity has rendered pathfinding function inoperable. Please use manual controls to locate research base. That implies that apparently elsewhere in the game. That's actually canonical. Was that falling just now? No, that was just rumbling. I briefly thought that the whole thing was collapsing under me. So that implies that perhaps in moments when I'm not controlling... Oh, there it is, yeah. The implication of that is that whenever I'm not controlling the hammerhead, Shepard might not be controlling it at all. It might just be going off on its own little trip. Like when we were in Overlord. And it was pathing to each individual location as we were on our way there. Extraction complete. So even in the Mass Effect universe, self-driving cars are already accepted as a thing. Even when they're tanks. Acquired. Which makes sense. The shuttles are probably just automated too on the Citadel. They're probably not manned by anyone, and you're, pro you're probably not driving them yourself. It probably just takes you from place to place when you requested to. The car, or the car equivalent of, a, of an elevator. What do you guys got over here? Ahead. You can probably finish this mission very quickly if you're not grabbing stuff along the way, but of course I will! Hi there. Oh. Hello, future level, probably. That loading screen just said there are no decent galactic dating services. If you want to meet new people, you have to talk to them. <laughs> that's a... That's a strange detail for a loading screen to include. Okay, sure. Why not? In the Mass Effect universe, you gotta go talk to people. Which, I mean, yeah. If, if there's anything that Bioware is gonna do, it's definitely gonna be fetishizing having long conversations with strangers. So, can I go down there? Or is this... No, that's just... That's an invisible wall. I wasn't sure if I was looking at an actual ramp to go somewhere or not. I was right. This site was a roadmap leading to the main Prothean ruins. Dr. Aloy and I agree that this must remain a secret at all costs. I will not allow another Eden Prime to occur. The Geth, the Reapers, all of them, they must be stopped. I always question who these people are that are sitting around recording their voices on computers all the time. Uh-oh. 
But I wanted to open this locker for Mass Effect 1. Maybe I wanted to open this terminal. Dr. Case is log number two. This hellish planet in a, is a star map that points to a Prothean site of major significance. Dr. Eloy and I have mere hours to retrieve all we can before the conditions become too dangerous to continue. We learned too late that the w local volcanic instability is magnified by our power grid. If we only had more time to study this, I'm sure the key to unlocking everything is here. Everything. Damn this planet. No, it was the key to everything and we're gonna lose it. I'm gonna bypass this door. I don't entirely believe them when they say that I'm in danger, so I'm just gonna ignore that and see if I'm right or wrong. For science! Science! That's the horizontal ones, there we go. I'm genuinely curious, I don't know if I am in any danger right now, or if it's just like, oh, urgency! Because there's a noteworthy lack of a time limit, among other things. Ooh, what's in here? More iridium! Don't mind if I do. All these finds, plus the finds of the DLC, plus the bonus for having played the game before, may greatly diminish my need to actually farm these resources in the first place, uh, for the parts where they're important, like upgrades and, and uh, mandatory progression things and stuff. We'll see. Now I'm checking out the private quarters. Dr. Case's log number one. We have detected a site of incredible significance located beneath the volcano. The unpredictable terrain will make retrieval of any data extremely hazardous. Damn this planet! Damn it to hell! I'll have to look that up at some point, what the uh, required resources are to get the all the important stuff out of the way by the end of the game. Because uh, I'm curious to see if that giant boost I seem to have uh, compensates for that much, or if it's still something I have to get way more of. I have no memory, because I'm terrible with numbers. Just in general. So yeah, I think I, I think there is no tension there. I think you're probably safe. Up we go! It's a good thing this volcano has perfectly evolved to make some sweet ramps. How do you get- how would you even get limbs out of this vehicle? It doesn't exactly have windows. I'm gonna do a sweet space kickflip with a tank. Tank flip. I'm gonna do 360 nolly to impossible. Here we go. I have not played a Tony Hawk game for a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time. To be fair, it's been a long time since they've made them well. Aside, the, aside from that one time recently. That one disaster that we shall not speak of. Because everyone forgot about it, mostly. That's the main reason no one's speaking about it, is people have already forgotten that it ever existed. We're done again. Dr. Case's location has been discovered. Landing party extraction from a volcano. Got money. Got stuff. All a good time. Yeah, getting- these are actually worth running just for the thousands of resources it gives me, I think. You can use those for upgrades for the ship, and upgrades that affect the story, and upgrades that affect your squad, and upgrades that affect your, uh, your weapons and so on. Whoa, we got a few of these, huh? Alright. Alert. Security breach. Project Firewalker. That was a close one on... on Karumto, Shepard. A disturbing fact has come to light in analyzing the channel you use to dis uh, transmit your findings. Unauthorized transmission have been sent from the MSV Rosalie to an unknown destination. It's assumed that this is how the Gath are tracking Doctor's case in Oloi. The data you retrieved gives us a definite location for Doctor Case's Prothean site. The Doctor was certain that the site held a Prothean revelation of enormous significance. It is recommended that you head there as soon as possible to counter any Geth retrieval missions already in play. Thank you again, Martin Burns. Commander Shepard. Eudina said this would reach you. I wanted you to know that I haven't forgotten what you did for me the day those crazy biotics took me hostage. You talked them down, and you got me off that ship alive. I won't lie to you. 
I took this job for the pull and the power. I saw the biotics issue as a stepping stone, something good to put on my resume, and I was wrong. We all serve humanity in our own way. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm going to see to it that humanity reaches its uh, its potential within a minimum uh, with a minimum of bloodshed. I'm getting letters of thanks from L2 Biotics who just received their reparations. Those letters would really be coming to you. Should be really coming to you. I just thought you should know. Good luck. I've taken some political heat, so I don't know that any offer to help you would ever be useful, but if you need me, I won't let you down. Martin Burns, Chairman, Subcommittee for Transhuman Studies. My fish died! Curse you, Firewalker! You technically counter several d distinct missions, so I have to feed the fucking fish between every mission, or they die. So they died. Because a bunch of five-minute missions count as just as long as all the ones that actually take time. Stupid fish mechanic. <laughs> Anomaly on Latesh. Planetary scans detect signals from sensor pods left on the planet's surface. These pods may contain valuable data. Warning. Surface temperatures are extremely low. I advise keeping hammerhead exposure to the cold at... An absolute minimum. Interesting. It's a warning not to be in the cold too much, which is a direct contradiction of what you expect to an extent. Almost as if it may be a mission built specifically in response to the other missions of this DLC, because it's called Firewalker. And several missions have you on, like, volcanoes and other places where stuff's really hot, and you have to watch out for those kinds of dangers. I wonder what dangerous cold even looks like. Are we talking about, like, the, like, uh... The day after tomorrow? Is that what we're going for here? Warning. Prolonged exposure to extreme temperatures may degrade engine performance. Mission objectives located. It's okay though, because we have a magical heating location. We've got a bunch of places to check out that happen to also be directly next to uh, what I think are like heating rods or something. I think being next to these things heats you. I could be wrong. It might just be that when you extract your objective, it heats you. Either way, we're, we're functionally just uh, reaching a bunch of checkpoints real quick. Here we go. Ah. Hi there. How you doing? Extraction complete. I'm just giving you hugs with my metal face. Caution. Engine temperature falling. Uh, yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Extraction complete. We're halfway there. Ah. Actually, it's a little hard to see. There it is. I never thought red, red could blend so well. <laughs> complete. Just that, that, that harsh white background can burn out anything. Here we are. Seven down. Complete. Come on. Extraction complete. Two to go. And my ow. Any progress towards f not freezing to death seems to be reducing. Extraction complete. Almost there. Yes, I am aware. You were a very repetitive robot. Were you hiding my last objective? There it is. Everything's fine, Jarvis. Extraction complete. We good? Alright, got it. And we're rewarded with one line of dialogue from a random party member. We did it. Whoa. Jeez. 
I gotta say, the cutscene version of the Hammerhead looks incredibly fun to control. It never quite works that way as us, but damn if it's not exciting for a few moments there. Like it pulls out some crazy, crazy maneuvers. Atmospheric data received from Project Firewalker, Commander. A very capable team is analyzing the data you've gathered from the Geth's research into atmospheric change. We hope it may open new avenues for terraforming procedures for future colonies. The tech used in the beacons also contains communication innovations that could help, uh, should help us develop better systems to reduce atmospheric noise. There is no evidence of protein activity on this planet. Glad you're okay. From Kate Bowman. Shepard, I called in some favors and found out how to get uh, you and what you uh, get you and what you're working on. Oh, how to get to you? No, no, it's, it is how to get you. It doesn't quite. Yeah, it's fine. We've got a big celebration planned on the uh, for the anniversary of you and the others saving Terra Nova. Last year, we added a memorial for you too. I guess that was premature, huh? I figure finding out who's attacking colonies is why you had to go undercover, so I won't invite you to come give a speech or anything, but I wanted you to know that all of us living on the colonies are worried about what's happening in the Terminus systems, and I'm really glad you're there to help. There's a lot of crazy military talk going around. I'm glad someone's there who's got, who's uh, not going to take the easy way out. Thanks, Kate Bowman. So if I remember correctly, Terra Nova was the DLC bringing down the sky. Where the uh, Batarians were trying to crash the n nearby mining asteroid directly into the planet that had a human colony on it. Which is a bad time. Anomaly on Coffus, or Copus. Protein artifacts detected on the planet's surface. Artifact site is protected by a powerful energy barrier. Scans detect muted mechanical signatures consistent with uh, hidden automated defenses. Let's go hide their defenses from reality. Okay then, where do I find power sources? Ah! I think I killed it by ramming it, actually. Interesting that Overlord straight up uses this exact fight in its uh, DLC. Oh. I go for a little trip. Her. There we go. Being able to make that jump almost seemed unintentional, but I'll take it. That's up there, a little hard to get to. There we go. I'm coming your way. Angry rocket drones, why? Why can't we not just play nicely? Oh, I should actually hit over there. There we go. We are under direct attack. They're, admit they're admittedly kind of pitiful though, aren't they? Let's go get this scan done, whatever this is that's just sitting here. Gimme, 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 gimme. More Ezo. Oh! Are we doing a genuine mission? We haven't done much of that so far. Alright, where's this Prothean Ruin? Damn it. I failed everyone. Oh, those are probably the doctors. The site is spectacular. Time, however, has proven to be the real enemy. Even with those blue sun thugs hired to protect the dig site, we barely managed to erect the shield before the geth arrived. How can they know our movements almost before we do? Am I beaming my thoughts directly to them? I must find out how they are doing this. I shall ask Dr. Aloy for whatever help he can provide. 
Oh, what was that? There you are. Almost missed my chance. Damn it. <laughs> it must be exterminated. It's a loud sound. Something's going on down here. We may not be happy with what we find. Hang on. What? They're impervious to all shots. That's the real reason that I was missing. You sneaky game. I'm looting bodies. Cool. Dr. Aloy must have been indoctrinated by the Reapers. I found him sending our data to a Geth ship. I won't be responsible for another Geth attack. Another Eden Prime. I've silenced Aloy. Forever. Interesting. So we have another case of indoctrination. Although, what if he was the one who was indoctrinated, actually, and Aloy was actually talking to the Alliance or Cerberus or whatever? Maybe he's the one that's crazy. We can use this. Ooh, that's a good one. That makes the trip worthwhile, too, I guess. It's too late for me. They're still in my head, stealing my thoughts. I can't keep them out. I've got no choice but to destroy this relic. And myself. Move the cursor and select the target code segment. I don't know why I read that out loud as if I need instructions this late in the game for how this mechanic works. Just a reflex sometimes. Like, oh look, text on the screen. Oh. What have I done? Oh, it looks like the Prothean rune from the first game that we found. The one that gave me a weird caveman story. That was weird. Dr. Case would never understand the deal I made with the Collectors. He's obsessed with these Protheans. He would sacrifice everything to learn their secrets. It nearly cost me my life, but I did it for you, Helen, to ensure you remained safe. The damn Collectors agreed to spare your colony in exchange for this Prothean find. I can only hope you remained innocent of any of this ugly business. It was all for you, Dr. Robert Aloy. Interesting, so... Aloy was not indoctrinated, but he, but uh, Case was not wrong about what he was doing either. He made it. He made a deal with the collectors, so he wasn't indoctrinated. He was just he was uh, blackmailed in a way, extorted. kind of nice to see something like that, because in the first game you'd encounter that kind of relic and it would give you a crazy explanation of what it did. It's like, it shattered into a billion pieces and you pass out and all this other stuff happens, but it's all just a text document telling you what happened while nothing happens on the screen. So it's, it's kind of a nice thing to revisit the same concept in the next game, but actually get a chance to animate some of the weirdness going on there. And we get a 10% uh, biotic damage bonus upgrade available. That's cool. Yeah, that alone makes the DLCs kind of worth it, is the fact that uh, they have... Many of the DLCs have some amount of squad bonuses and resources scattered about that'll help your overall playthrough. Project Firewalker. The burst of energy that coincided with your retrieval of the Prothean artifact contained coded information. Most of the data was, beho was beyond our ability to track, but the threads we were able to decrypt have provided new avenues for research on energy transfer and biotics. It will keep the scientists busy for years to come. The data indicates that the artifact is currently inert and not dangerous. We wonder, however, that if Dr. Casey had more time, would we he have unlocked its secrets? We will continue his research. A landmark find for humanity. Good work, Shepard. Therapy. From Han Olar to Shepard. They say you're alive, that you cheated death. That sending you this isn't just a pointless exercise as part of my therapy. They say a lot of things. I'm still alive. 
She still isn't. I hear you killed Benezia. Nicely done. Another woman I helped kill. If my information did any good. They want me to thank you. The Rachni would have killed us all had you not shown up. It would have... It would have been right. Why me and not her? Why did you show up then and not before? They think they can fix me. But maybe you're not really back. Maybe I died. Maybe I didn't close that door in time. Maybe I held it open to give her a chance, and the Rachni ripped my suit open, and I died of exposure there on Peak 15. Maybe I'm a martyr, and this is an ugly hallucination before a glorious afterlife. But if I'm not, then thank you. Han Olar. You're too small, from Morlan. I am sorry, my mate. I leave you for a Krogan, because you are not endowed as good as you, uh, as good for your species. Do you fear these words? Moreland's famous shop sells many enhancements online that are not restricted by Citadel trading regulations. Whether, you're, whether you require hormone augmentation, cybernetic enhancements, or gen genobiotic xenografting, Morlo has many things you'll be pleased with. All species and gender order online from Moreland's famous extranet site hot linked from this message. Product availability varies by local trade regulations. All element zero products require shipping surcharge. No shipping to Omega. Krogan reproductive organs not available. Other restrictions may apply. Oh, Moreland. So Moreland was a, uh, the shopkeeper, I believe, on the Citadel in the first game. Uh, one of the places that I think... Sh I Where was it? If I remember correctly, is I think we met with the local doctor during a side quest late in the playthrough, and we had to go to Moreland's shop specifically. So that's a callback to a character from a minor character from the previous game. There we go. That's the end of Firewalker. No great narrative content from like like you, you never have a conversation with somebody, and not, not much goes on there. But uh, you find a Prothean ruin, so that's kind of neat. Now for something that's a little less disposable for content, though, the Warlord. Dr. O'Kear, millennia of combat and strategic experience, rumored familiarity with collector technology. A brilliant and brutal Krogan warlord who fought the, in the Krogan rebellions, Dr. O'Kear has become obsessed with saving the Krogan people from the genophage and is believed to have contacted the collectors in an attempt to gain technology to, the, to that end. He is currently in a Blue Suns camp on Corliss, though the nature of his relationship with the mercenary group is unknown. So that's interesting, because you'll remember the quote from Mass Effect 1, where Rex says, You ever heard of a cr of a... Wait, I should buy upgrades real quick, actually. Since I have new ones. He's... Rex is all like, You ever heard of a cr uh, Krogan scientist? And it turns out, later in that game, we encountered a Krogan scientist that was trying to cure the genophage, and we just did it again. We're, we're about to, We're on our way to another Krogan scientist. Ooh. Bonus up. I'm a capacity on heavy weapons. Yes. Thank you. Avalanche, Missile Launcher, Kane. I'll avoid this for now. Biotic damage, 10%, and it costs like nothing! Hooray! Damage reduction. 20% uh, to shields, barriers, and armor. Also very cheap. Redundant field generator. Sometimes when Shepard's shields go down, they are instantly fully restored. Costs 15 grand of platinum. But it's also awesome! Emergency shielding. Unity restores squad member shields back to full strength. Lots of platinum. Uh, it's so much plat. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Do it and don't look back. There we go. I have it now. Shotgun damage. Twenty-five hundred platinum. I'll, if I have to put in the hours of grinding away at these resources, then I'll just will. Increases damage by fifty percent against shields and biotic barriers. Improves shotguns, heavy shotguns, and assault shotguns to your entire squad. Yeah. Okay. Against shields and biotic barriers. That, that's a bonus. It also cost me all of my platinum. Ooh. And people don't really use shotguns that much. Ah. A little iffy on that one. I'm probably going to just come back and cave on it later. Let's just, let's just admit that about myself. But for now, I'm going to feel slightly good about myself for not immediately caving in and doing it. Because I'm full of it. Corliss. A garbage scow with a climate was how one Citadel Council member described Corliss at the turn of the century, and ever since then the Corliss Tourist Bureau has been attempting to rebrand their planet. It hasn't worked, 
though they have tried calling it the recycling center of the galaxy. Corruption, scandals, and a staggering murder rate ensure that Corliss's image is permanently stained. Corliss's biggest business is the recycling of decommissioned or junked spacecraft into their component parts. While the invention of Omnigel has made this process significantly cleaner, it is still a dirty business that chokes Corliss's sky with smog and fills its ports with megatons of scrap. A shady hospitality industry and a scavenger underclass round out the spectacle of urban decay. Travel Advisory Corliss ranks second in murder per capita in the Terminus systems, and first in off-worlder murder. Civilian traffic is encouraged to employ security professionals when visiting. So apparently this is the number one place where you're most likely to be killed by another another uh, sentient creature in the entire Terminus systems. Whoa. Population is 3.8 billion. That's a lot of he that's a lot of creatures. All right. Capital is Choquo supposedly, but it's disputed. They can't even agree on the capital. Going to be a colorful place. Well, in concept. Visually it looks like it might just be brown. I feel like we gotta bring along Morden, since these, uh, Solarians and Krogan tend to get along so well with each other. And let's give, uh, Jack a chance. Hopefully we'll, she'll actually get a line out at some point. Because I think I, I previously took her on the mission where she never speaks, because it's a DLC mission, regardless of who you bring, so it doesn't amount to a whole lot. The dossier doesn't say if Okir is on this planet by choice. Assume hostiles. There is only one measure of success. Kill or be killed. I already want to kill this person. Stay focused. We're looking for a Krogan warlord. Well, that was an abrupt reaction. <laughs> Immediately got entries about kill or be killed and Jack didn't like that. I do like the all the flavor text that kind of pops up from time to time. Yeah, she doesn't sound like a total drone at all. All right, armor. Yeah. Immediately, huh? All right, we have shockwave and incinerate. That'll work out for me. Got him. Can't see him, but I got him. Where you guys at? Aha. Uh -huh. Was that guy standing up? With his feet below the floor? What was happening there? <laughs> that guy that guy fell out of the level. He got hit by the shockwave and probably fell out of the geometry of the level completely. Shit! Shit! I won't stop bleeding. I'm gonna I'm gonna you son of a bitch. Doesn't look that bad, actually. He doesn't need to know that. I knew it wasn't Berserkers. Ah, not at range. You're mercs. Or alliance. I'm not... I'm not telling you anything. You're not in the best bargaining position. I'm looking for a Krogan named Okir. Who? <laughs> you already know more than I do. I just kill Krogan. The old one in the lab dumps crazy ones down here all the time. Jador hired him to make her an army, but the Krogan he creates are insane. So we use them for live ammo training. It's all crap. I don't get paid enough to goddamn bleed out. Outpost 4, Jador wants us to move. We need coordinates on that Krogan pack. You heard the man on the radio. He needs direction. I... I don't have the info they want. You showed up before I could get my normal sightings. You have other problems. Patrol, uh... Uh, pack sighting east of Station 2. Yeah. Copy. East of 2. Bitch. They'll run blind into Krogan. What is Jador planning to do with all these Krogan? Replace us, probably. I sure wouldn't want to see an army of them coming at me. Only she can't control them. They aren't supposed to be crazy, but they're Krogan. How smart are they to start? Have you seen Okir? Does he know about all this? We can't go in the labs, but everyone sees what happens when the Krogan come out. I've shot hundreds. They're crazy, mindless. Anyone up there, they know what's going on. Is Jador's lab heavily guarded? There are big guns to keep ships away. We're not outfitted to fight goddamn commandos. If 
you start limping now, you might find a shady spot before you bleed out. Shit. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Funny. I thought so. Come on. Our warlord is somewhere in Jador's lab. Training is part of your contract. Failure to perform means liquidation, legal and otherwise. How's that for morbid, huh? They've got to have so many resources to make that kind of thing work out. Whoa, look at him go. <laughs> is he going to get up? Not, not quite. Like, the resources there to have the, just the organic materials to create hundreds, thousands of, of uh, Krogan clones back to back. That also clothed them, apparently, because that, that, that guy was in full armor that we saw there. And he's supposedly one of, the, one of those. That's a huge amount of just crazy Krogan everywhere. I accidentally just tried to use Overload on that guy, which does nothing because he has no shields and is not not a mechanical character. Boom! I love Shockwave. It's, it's, it's a fun skill to have access to, which means, means it's fun to have uh, Jack in the party. Here comes more! Whee! Oh, tried to get him. I think he just... That was a long scream. I'm guessing that he fell. Why are they clothing the... What are they doing that for? Oh. I can't help but wonder if they're, if they're making a bunch of Krogan and just disposing of them, why are they all getting clothed? Like, fully clothed in, like, combat armor. Whoa. That guy got, that guy got the, worst, the worst possible treatment just now. He got shockwave through the air and set on fire mid midway through that process. Oh, that was unfortunate. You missed me. Ooh, that's fantastic. This is the perfect level to bring Jack on, apparently, because everybody's on high up spots and they're all just falling to their dooms over and over again. As ferocious as they are, Krogan are expendable, she says. Nope, oh, there's a Krogan. Let's keep that Krogan alive! There you go. <laughs> I love that. So they're they're totally taunting me here, right? Because he looks from the, from this rear perspective, he looks exactly like Rex. But there's zero there's zero reason it would be Rex right here. But he looks exactly like Rex, and they, that was not an accident. We'll end it quickly. Tank grown Krogan. That looks exactly like Rex from behind. smell like this world. Seven night cycles, and I have felt only the need to kill. But you... Something makes me speak. Seven what? Is a week old? They must breed them full size, ready to kill. Not much improvement over regular mercs if they need training. Bread. To kill. No. I kill because my blood and bone tell me to. But it's not why I was flushed from Glass Mother. Survival is what I hear in my head. Against the enemy that threatens all my kind. But I failed, even before waking. That is what the voice in the water said. That is why I wait here. You're supposed to be part of a mercenary army. Do you remember Jador? I know that name. It causes anger. But also laughter. It is not a name that will be sung when we march. I don't know what that means, but I have heard it many times. How can you speak if you're only a week old? There was a scratching sound in my head, and it became the voice. It taught things I would need. Walking, talking, hitting, shooting. Then the voice said I was not perfect, and the teaching stopped. And now I am here. Interesting. Raised, then rejected. Control group, failed test. I don't know, 
but I am not perfect. Okir's voice? Did he speak to you while you were in your tank? I heard the voice. Not like now. With ears. Inside. I called it Father. It liked that. But it was disappointed. I'm not what it needs me to be. A breeding program. Trying to escape Genophage effects? Escape. Escape was never whispered. Survive. Resist. Ignore. I destroyed Saren's cure. How does Okir expect these Krogan to ignore the Genophage if not by curing it? Uncertain. Likely irrelevant. Appears Okir has had no success. How did you disappoint the voice? I don't know. It was decided before I left Tank Mother. I was not perfect. If Mercenary was correct, Krogan prone to mental instability. I don't know of that, but I'm not perfect. Can you show me the laboratory? I need to speak with Okir. The... Glass Mother. She is up, past the broken parts, behind many of you fleshy things. I will show you. Rough stuff. I like it. Fleshy things are slow when big things are in your way. You could have run or tried to fight your way back to the labs. Why stay here? I am waiting. The voice told me, if they come, I fight. But I will not run. And I will not follow. I am not perfect, but I have purpose. I must wait until called. Released. How bizarre is everything about that, huh? He's just... He's just sort of some sort of Krogan clone. He's just gonna hang out right here and fight whatever comes in if it's something that is... that is deemed necessary, and that's about it. It's bizarre. Okay, that's a lot of damage happening to me at once. No thank you? Okay, that was bad. That was a bad moment. I reacted not entirely properly, although at one point I tried to activate somebody's skill and ended up setting a waypoint on the ground, so that's not the intention any either. So my guess with the, uh, ignoring the genophage is the idea of, like, instead of curing it by being able to breed again and stuff... Oh god. Instead of curing it, which would lead to you actually being able to breed again, it seems that Okir is just trying to mass clone Krogan's no need, no need to uh, cure the genophage if you ignore it by circumventing it. And you circumvent it by just making new Krogans yourself. A new way. And that seems to be what he's doing here. But it doesn't seem to be enough for him to just make Krogans. He needs to make good enough Krogans on some level. So he's got some sort of goal of what the Krogan should be like that he's making. Here we go. Ow. Okay, I'm taking a lot of hits from places I don't want to be taking hits. Bad times. That guy's got a big sh big gun over there. Watch now. There we go. We're good. So on, on one level, you might just think he wants to make Krogan, period, and that's enough. But he's rejecting Krogan, which seems to sh suggest that there's a certain level of quality he's trying to reach. It could be that he just needs th them to be sufficient, maybe they're just too broken right now. Or, maybe he's trying to make them better than real Krogans. In which case, that would- and there's- there's- uh, there's, uh, there's other narrative elements to support that kind of approach. Because we also have other cases of experimentation and perfection of various people in this very game already. You have Miranda being a genetic experiment where his father- her father tried to make a perfect creature, basically. And you even have Jack as a- some sort of victim of, uh, Cerberus experiments. So you have now multiple cases in this game of some kind of genetic manipulation and attempts to create super soldiers. You could accuse the game of overusing the idea, of course, because it's, uh, it seems weird that every quest you encounter would suddenly be another person that's being genetically modified or made into a super soldier or part of some crazy program or something, but... 
the specific storyline, the entire context of the story of this particular game is the idea that, uh, we're trying to put together a, a super team to, to go on some kind of suicide mission because we need to stop the Collectors and the Reapers. So in this specific context, it kind of fits that so many people would have potentially similar and kind of broken backstories. Because that make because their tragic their tragic histories and the darkness involved in their creation also makes them perfect subjects for this exact situation, this exact mission we're going on. Also, maybe the, the elusive man just didn't want to do that many different Google searches, <laughs> so stuff with that came up in related tags or just he just went with. <laughs> Reeve is helping a lot. A lot of reaving and incinerating going on. Krogan took down the grid. We're blind and getting hit on all sides. Where are the heavies? Unfortunately, the, once the Krogan started showing up, Jack's uh, physics-based attacks seem to get a little less effective because they don't quite go flying the way the humans do. But it sounds like there may be more blue suns coming up soon. They're everywhere. It almost, it's almost weird how much you see Blue Sun specifically compared to the other gangs, because I feel like half the content off, outside of Omega covers them over and over again. But they do have different backstories, so if I were to recall the exact backstory and premise of each, uh, each individual gang, it probably makes way more sense why the Blue Squad, uh, Blue Suns are used so much. We can use this. Hey, sniper rifle upgrade. I'll take it. I'll take everything. Alright, so what's going on in this next room and why am I going to be using this in it? Because <laughs> I hear shooting, so why not? Hello, dead people. Hi there. No, thank you. You guys alright? You guys don't seem alright. Oh, that was nasty. I almost feel bad. Almost. What are they shooting at? Are there Krogans down there? There was gunfire happening behind the door, and they were both facing this- they were both around- yeah. There must be Krogans down there to fight. It looked, looked like they were fighting each other, but they were the same team, so they must have been shooting down. Fly for me! You doing alright, buddy? You're not. The answer's no. Ah? What? Oh, hi. You're- that's adorable. I guess- ah, crap. I guess that's where he landed, huh? That was almost bad. Surprise new enemies showing up mid-fight. I love the idea that that guy ended up on top of that freaking crate because of the physics of the throw. That's great. Oh, I should have used overload. I also should have hit him with the attack instead of missing completely. Jack! Get up here. You're specifically more useful while standing, as it turns out. You know what, maybe I'll do one of these again. Just because I can. There we go. Could not get a shot off for a while there. Just not entirely sure how effective that one was either. Get him, Morton. There we go. I think he's down. Running for it. There's a clear attempt to make the environments more kinetically varied and dynamic with all the slanted, broken stuff everywhere and everything, because the last game was kind of, uh... A lot of the environments were kind of the same static places repeating a lot. So everything's chaotic and looks less clean and prepared for the player this time around. Thank you. Come and get us, bad guys. I'm ready. This place actually reminds me of Pharos a bit. Just going around on these ruins that are all decrepit and a mess. Physics! <laughs> I see somebody with shields. There we go. Ah! Ladder on fire! There we go. I love that she can use that attack through walls. That's great. The shockwave will just go in a straight line no matter what's in between. Doesn't matter. 
That guy's gonna be down. Headshot. Of course. I he I heard you bragging about your headshot. Oh, Morden, you do care. Oh no, I hit the wrong one. Uh, holy crap. Danger. 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 No, 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 don't go there. Use your attack on him. Use your attack. There we go. She was oddly non-responsive for a while there. He seemed a little stuck, so I took care of him. <laughs> that guy's standing on top of that guy. What? What the heck is happening right now? That's alarming. Oh. You stick up there, dude? <laughs> Get him! Yes! Oh, he didn't go sailing off. It's on, it's on fire, though. There we go. Gotta save that ammo somehow. Suppress all your... Just firing on all cooldowns. There you guys are. Don't stop sending them forward. I'm just trying to hit them with powers. Nope, don't let him reach cover. Oh, he jumped over the cover. I questioned that plan a bit. Alright, he's down. Oh, my armor. I liked that. Excuse me. Fly for me! <laughs> it never really gets old, honestly. I hear grunting. That means I'm connecting. Well, that's going to be bad for you. Ooh. That's a bad time. I'm sure she's fine. Gotcha. Oh, power cells. Not much going on. All right, we're good. <laughs> Concentrate on the sound of my voice and then just loud screaming. <laughs> oh, little blue nub. There it is. Orange and orange and purple. There you are. Ah, I, I lost it. It went up to the top of the screen. Got it. We're good. This seems to go... Yep, nowhere. Just then upstairs it is. Sure hope we're going somewhere, Shepard, because we are just wandering in a random direction, basically. This is just a series of random ramps with no particular goal in sight, and we're just kind of hoping it works out. Not the, not the best plan, I'd say. Moving in. He can politely die. There we go. That's always fun. You trying to hide from me? That's not going to work out long term. Maybe next time. Nah. That's not how life works. There goes the shields. Yes. <laughs> it's always great. It's always great. Ow. Ow. Okay. I didn't want that armor anyway. Watch out. There's bad news happening in that direction. Hey, look at him go. I think I, I think I successfully reaved her in midair. Yeah, I did. Watch out. There we go. It's great how they stand up. It's like once you once you reave them, you're just kind of they're just kind of doomed at that point. I guess the shield upgrade must be working out for Morden, because, uh, Jack's not lasting nearly as much in general. Oh, there you guys are. You're on fire today. 
and forever. Well, you're no longer on fire, but you're dead. It's, for it's forever for you. And that's the important thing to me. Speaking of fire. <laughs> screaming. Horrible, horrible screaming. Nothing will make the voices stop. The voices in my head that say to kill. I love that in order to try to make her seem like the edge lord that she is, that the uh they they used all of the crappy dialogue from the first game for combat. Just to stress how silly she kind of comes across as a weird Riddick fan fiction character. Ah oh, both of you guys now, huh? Alright. Well that's a problem. Yep. Alright, well you're not gonna like this part, guys. Well, that didn't do crap. My bad. I thought I would. I thought that would work better in that context than it ended up doing. I think I need a more open fight. Bye. Did she even land on anything? I think she's just gone. All right. Bye. Which way is the way forward, and which way is the side area is full of potential loot? Because I can't really tell anymore. It's all just garbage. It's all just brown garbage. This level could go on forever for one and two, and I wouldn't be able to tell where I'm going anyway. Or we're there. Shepherd, don't shoot. You know me. Uh, wow. So I guess you got off Vermeer, huh? I shut down the security cams as soon as I saw it was you. Never thought I'd say it, but I'm glad it's you shooting up the place. Sorry, Ranathanoptis. You let me go when you destroyed Saren's lab on Vermeer? Had to outrun a nuke in a utility pod, but it's still a second chance. I assume you have a good reason for being at this lab? Don't worry, I'm not wasting the chance you gave me. My work here, strictly beneficial. Not for the mercs. Jador's on a standard power trip. But Okir is trying to do something good, even if his methods are a little extreme. Everyone deserves a second chance, right? And sometimes giving one pays off. I take care of my debts. What is Okir trying to do here? It's complicated. Jador wants a private army, but Okir mostly ignores her. He's running the project for his own reasons. I created a mental imprint routine to educate his tank bread. Most don't get through it. He dumps them for some reason. He wants to help his people, but he's not looking for a genophage cure, and he's not going for numbers. That's all I know. Finding you in a place like this makes me think letting you go was a mistake. You don't want that. We agree on that. Don't worry. I plan on staying as far away from anything to do with you as possible. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna run like hell before you blow the place or something. I know how you work. Should have killed her. Too much knowledge without ethical boundaries. Well, we've let her walk twice now, and twice she's been working with a Krogan scientist, specifically. That's a very specific trend to follow. Let's see if we can follow her, find her a third time working with a uh, Krogan scientist at some point. Just go for the hat trick, right? There definitely are hat tricks in the Mass Effect trilogy. I uh, don't remember if that's one of them necessarily, but there are a few things where the same, the same character will do something in all three games or something like that. Just as a running joke, basically. Like Carmine. You are. I've watched your progress. Holy crap, your voice. It's about time. The batteries on these tanks will not wait while you play with these idiotic mercs. I take it you're okay here. You don't seem particularly caged or grateful that I'm here. You may claim to be here to help, but the formerly deceased Shepard is not a sign of gentle change. Surprised. All Krogan should know you. I'm sure Rana has already revisited your actions on Vermeer. I'm sure you're eager to retell the story. Such a tale. Saren, the Spectre Traitor, threatens the return of the Krogan Horde by curing the Genophage, undoing the gentle genocide of the Turians and Salarians. But before Saren can deliver his endless troops, 
Inrod Shepard, securing victory through nuclear fire. I like that part. It has weight. I didn't have a lot of room for finesse. If there'd been any other solution, I'd have considered it. But I approve. Saren's Pale Horde were not true Krogan. Numbers alone are nothing. The mistake of an outsider, one that these mercenaries have also made. I gave their leader my rejects for her army, but she grows impatient. It's time for you to take me out of here. Personal issues irrelevant. Here for the Collectors. I see. Yes. Collector attacks have increased. A human concern. My requests were focused elsewhere. I acquired the knowledge to create one pure soldier. With that, I will inflict upon the Genophage the greatest insult an enemy can suffer. To be ignored. Your search for the perfect soldier created a lot of failures. You don't care about them? I failed no one. My rejects are exactly what Jador asked for. She simply lacks the ability to command. They are strong, healthy, and useless to me. I need perfection. If a few thousand are rejected, so be it. My work will purify the Krogan. We will not be restored. We will be renewed. I thought the Krogan ideal was a return to the numbers that threatened the galaxy. We will not need numbers. My soldier is a template. It is a greater threat than all the phantom siblings that would have been at its flank. The galaxy still bears the scars of the Horde, but it will learn to fear the Lance. You're just as cruel and manipulative as those who released the Genophage on your people. Perhaps. But I will restore the Krogan, and my soldier will not provoke a nuclear response as a cure or Horde would. My legacy is perfection with each pure Krogan reaching higher by standing on our dead. They will exceed, but not forget. What did you get from the Collectors? I need whatever you know about them. They are strange. So isolated, yet very available when your sacrifice is big enough. I gave them many Krogan. I may have information for you, but the tech was consumed in my prototype after I determined how to use it without killing the subjects. The deaths were unfortunate, but I only need one success to start the process. So you don't want to cure the Genophage? Contrary to what survivors claim, the Genophage does not produce strong Krogan. The only quality it filters is the ability to survive the Genophage. For every thousand stillborn, too many weaklings live. Every survivor is branded as precious. That's produced more cuddling than your collective human teeth. I say, let us carry the Genophage. Let a thousand die in a clutch. We will defeat it by climbing atop our dead. That is the Krogan way. That's interesting. So the, on top of thinking that testicle tan transplants are somehow going to cure the Genophage, the Krogan have also maintained a misleading uh, a misguided belief that somehow surviving the genophage and being someone who is born despite everything somehow means that you're the strong one but it really just means that you're somehow escaping the genophage and that's not how it's just not how genes work your methods are extreme but you know how to deconstruct a threat will you help us perhaps i can strike a deal to secure passage but my prototype is not negotiable it is the key to my legacy. Attention! I have traced the Krogan release. Oak here, of course. I'm calling blank slate on this project. Gas these commandos and start over from Oak here's data. Flush the tanks! She's that weak will. She'll kill my legacy with a damn valve. Shepard, you want information on the Collectors? Stop her. She'll try to access contaminants in the storage bay. Sorry, Doctor. It appears your position is just weakened. 
I understand, but you'll have nothing if she poisons us all. Jador will be with the rejected tanks. Kill her. I will stay and do what must be done. Time to get going. So we have another rather nondescript looking uh, Blue Suns leader. Just sort of, it just looks some sort of character creator template, basically. They're not the most interesting character so far. Much like the one we encountered that was Zaid's 20 year Can revenge legacy. Down, and it was just like some, it, it looked like another like template from the character creator, basically. And so does she. Now let's shoot her in her character creator face. Because only there can only be one, and it's me. That was weird. That was weird how the door just opened, uh, closed in my face. Oh, that's a big mech. Oh, that's multiple problems actually. Okay. Well, this will do for now. Stick your head out. Oh, there go. Ow! Well, there goes the armor. There we go. There goes the rest of the armor. Come on, shockwave! There she goes. She probably won't last much longer at this point. She may, she may still be alive, but not for much longer. That was the wrong attack to use there. I think she's dead. Yeah. Now we just need to pierce these shields. There we go. That's more what I was going for. Just gotta reave the armor now. He's he's thankfully a tad ineffectual about being able to reach around the uh, the cover. Almost there. There we go. There we go. Oh. Great. What's the old guy done back in his lab? Shepard, the lab alarms coincided with the system's failure. The remaining contamination detected. Emergency vent in progress. Contamination detected. Emergency vent in progress. And he died because of the poison. Whatever he did must have saved him. He killed how many, but vented the tanks into the room to save this one? Delusional. Unlikely one Krogan, however strong, could have impact Okir wanted. Um, almost certain. Suggest leaving it. Afraid he'll make your genophage obsolete? No, but Krogan genetically dangerous, socially dangerous as well. Have enough enemies without adding this. Normandy, Okir is a no-go, but we have a package that needs retrieval. And he's a big one. Hey, another level up. Wait, two level ups? I think I was 13 earlier, wow, okay. Cloning facility destroyed. Okir dead, but his son was recovered. Loss of Okir could be a problem. We'll allow Shepard to decide whether to activate the Krogan. And a number of upgrades, actually. Nice. So, now we have a tank Krogan on our ship. And it's actually our choice, interestingly, whether we want to wake it up or not, which I think is actually a really cool detail for the story. Bringing the Krogan for study makes sense, but I have concerns about waking it. Yeah, you've said that a few times now. A normal Krogan is dangerous. This one was created and likely educated by a madman. I see everyone's enjoying the new paperweight. Concerns? We don't know anything about it, Commander. I'm not saying we take a crowbar to it right now, but I'm not giving up a potential resource. It's your decision, Commander. Just be careful. Noted. The cargo hold is safe enough while I decide what to do with him. Oh, 
a little friction as to be anticipated. It's a it's a big old question mark. It's not what we came here for, basically. <laughs> we did not come here to uh to recruit a a tank grown Krogan super soldier whatever question mark thing. We came here for Okir, who has connections with the uh, collectors and is a Krogan scientist. And now he's gone and we got this instead. I love that by the way. I love that it's I love when a story gets messy like that. Because uh, one of the worst things, <clears throat> well, I feel like at times one of the worst things a story can do is very explicitly tell you exactly what's going to happen at the beginning and be like, you're going to go to these four planets and get these four things, the end, and then just have that actually be what happens. Uh, JRPGs in particular have a nasty tendency to be like, you gotta get the four elemental spirits in order to defeat the bad guy monster demon with friendship. And then your four friends are the elements of those four temples, and you go to the four temples, and you get the four elements, and some character development happens along the way, but it's like it's so cut and dry exactly what happens, and then and then you just go beat the bad guy with your four elemental powers. I'm like, huh. I, you told me what was going to happen at the beginning, and then it actually happened. And that's... I feel like if you're going to tell somebody at the beginning what the structure of the whole game is going to be, some elements of it should be subverted along the way, or it's not going to be a great time. Uh... And so that, that, uh, the most basic way that uh, Bioware does that is that they often have a go to these four planets and then when you do three of them another one suddenly shows up that's like the late game planet that kind of throws a wrench in the works and that planet usually leads to something crazy happening. Maybe a plot twist or a great reveal or a big encounter with a big bad guy or um, character deaths as we saw before and stuff like that. Uh, that, that's a bit of a twist, but this game th foregoes Bioware's usual uh, campaign structure entirely and turns into a series of recruitment missions for party members for a huge chunk of its overall uh, story. The majority of mandatory quests in this game are actually these character recruitment quests, but the idea that the quests themselves can be some subversions and surprises or something is kind of cool. Like one, we went, we went for Archangel. Surprise, Archangel turns out to be Garrus. That was cool. And then you go in for Okir, this K Krogan scientist. And instead, the only thing you end up leaving with is, is some kind of unknown Krogan that's never been alive before yet, and still isn't alive, and it, like, ha still isn't self-aware and sentient and moving around yet, and it's just in a vat, and you just decide what to do with it. And I think you can leave him on. I think you can just not wake him up the entire game, but, I mean, who does that? <laughs>